Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential equation. We have 16 to the power x plus 4 to the power x plus 1 all over 4 to the x plus 2 to the x plus 1 equals 3. And we're going to be solving for x values. Now, we can go ahead and just cross multiply to see what happens. This is going to give us 16 to the x plus 4 to the x plus 1 equals 3 times 4 to the x plus 3 times 2 to the x plus 3. And then we can kind of put everything on the left hand side and we can go ahead and subtract like terms. For example, this can be subtracted 16 to the x plus 1 minus 3. That's going to be a negative 2 times 4 to the x. And then minus 3 times 2 to the x. We've taken care of these. And then finally, 1 minus 3 is going to be a negative 2. And then we can try to factor this. Do you think this is going to be factorable? Well, I could probably take out a 4 to the x here. and But these two terms, they don't really have anything besides 2. And do you think taking out a 2 as a common factor is going to help us? I'm not exactly sure. But anyways, when you distribute these kinds of things without doing anything else, uh, things are going to get messy. So that's why we want to use something that will help us a lot. And that is called substitution. We're going to look at the lowest base, which is 2 in this case, if you don't count the ones. And we're going to call this something. How about calling this t, right? So t is equal to 2 to the power x. So our expression, which is 16 to the x plus 4 to the x plus 1, divided by 4 to the x plus 2 to the x plus 1, becomes... Now, think about it. 16 is 2 to the 4th, so this is going to be t to the 4th power. This is going to be t squared. This is going to be 1. And at the bottom, 4 to the x again, t squared, 2 to the x is t, and plus 1. And this is equal to 3. Now, f distributing at this point is much better than doing it with the exponentials. Or you could also use substitution at this point, which is going to give you the same thing, pretty much. So now let's go ahead and cross-multiply. We get t to the fourth plus t squared plus 1 equals 3t squared plus 3t plus 3. And then subtracting everything, putting everything on the left-hand side is going to give us t to the fourth minus 2t squared minus 2t or not 2t minus 3t minus 2 equals 0. Now, this equation is not factorable easily, at least. Uh, like by grouping, I don't think it's factorable. I kind of tried t squared times t squared minus 2, but then I don't get that here. Or you can try the first and the last terms, but that's not like a difference of two squares or something. And you can try these two. That's not going to help either. So in some cases it does, but we still need to check. So this is not factorable, and this kind of tells me rational root theorem is probably not going to help me either. But I can still try it like... Factors of 2, are, there aren't that many, like we have plus minus 1 and plus minus 2. Now, if you look at the sum of the coefficients, it's not 0, so 1 is not a root. How about negative 1? We can check the evens and odds. The evens give me negative 1, and the odds give me, actually, evens give me 1 minus 2 minus 2. That's going to be 1 minus 4, which is negative 3, and the odds are negative 3. So, that's good, because this tells me t equals negative 1 is a solution. Why? Let's go ahead and find out. If you plug in negative 1, you get 1 minus 2 plus 3 minus 2. That's going to be 0. Awesome. So t equals negative 1 works, which is good. And what would happen if we didn't find the rational root? Then we would have to use e either the quartic formula or try to factor it into two quadratics. Again, that will be a solving a system of, um, not a system, that will be solving uh, equivalent to solving a cubic equation. So you can reduce the power with cortex like that. But that's a little painful. Uh, I'm glad that we were able to find this. So t equals negative 1 allows us to reduce the power. Let's go ahead and write this equation as follows. Minus, I want to write it as plus t cubed so that as you can see t cubed times t plus 1. t plus 1 is a factor because t if t is negative 1, t plus 1 is one of the factors, because t plus 1 is going to be 0. Make sense? So, I can rearrange these factors. So, minus t cubed, minus t squared, plus 3t squared, and then I have to follow with 3t, and then minus, hmm, I don't think this is going to work, but I mean, maybe we made a mistake. Let's 
keep track of things. And then I have, oh, okay. I do need negative two T squared, so addition of three T squared, definitely a mistake. So I'm supposed to actually subtract another T squared. Exactly, because I do need negative two T squared. Great, and then um, obviously uh, I do need to follow this by a minus T, but then it needs to be followed by a minus two T, and then minus two closes it up, okay? Okay, great, that's the final piece. And now I can go ahead and factor T cubed times T plus one minus t squared times t plus one, minus t times t plus one, and minus two times t plus one. This is basically equivalent to long division, but I like this better because it kind of allows me to manipulate the terms uh, to get the factor that I want. Anyways, uh, you can manipulate expressions, but don't manipulate people as much as possible. Don't do it. t cubed minus t squared minus t minus two equals zero. Awesome. So we ended up with t plus 1, obviously. t equals negative 1 is the solution. But what about the other solutions? Well, they need to come from the, what? The cubic. <laughs> so we're going to solve this cubic. And solving the cubic isn't, isn't as painful as solving the cortic, but it still requires some work. But anyways, as you can see, this is the first method, even though I haven't mentioned it. But t equals negative 1 gives us what? What is t, right? Well, t is... 2 to the power x, so that's not super helpful, is it? Well, 2 to the power x equals negative 1 is going to give us complex solutions. If you think about it, you can basically write this as e to the power um, ln 2 to the power x. Does that make sense? And that's going to be e to the power x ln 2. And negative 1 can be written as e to the power 2n plus 1 times pi i in polar form. From here, you can set the exponents equal. x ln 2 is equal to 2n plus 1. n is an integer, by the way. Pi i. Divide both sides by ln 2. And you'll get the x values. And they are complex. n equals 0, n equals 1, whatever negative values work as well. So on and so forth, right? So there must be another solution. And you can still try negative 1 and other possibilities. Or you can use the cubic formula. But with the first method, it's just going to be a little painful. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method, which is going to give us the answers in a nicer way. So the second method basically picks up from here. I'm going to write this uh, equation in this format again. Now, at this point, we can go ahead and factor the numerator. The numerator is actually x squared plus 1 squared minus x squared. And that is actually a difference of two squares. Hopefully, you knew that. This is a common cortic that can be factored. And now I can write it as x squared plus x plus 1 and x squared minus x plus 1. If you divide it by x squared plus x plus 1, obviously this can't be 0 because the discriminant is negative. And from here we get x squared minus x plus 1 equals 3. That means minus 2 equals 0. And from here we can basically factor this as negative 2 and 1, x minus 2, x plus 1 equals 0, and one of the solutions will be negative 1, and the other one is just going to be x equals 2. This is the one we've been looking for, because if you set it equal to 2 to the power x, oops, it's not, it wasn't supposed to be, actually, I messed up. It wasn't t. I was, I was thinking it's supposed to be equal to t. From here, we get two values, x equals 2 and x equals negative 1, okay? And the other values obviously just disappeared because those are complex. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.